and of course, Mera Naam Joker used to be our most favourite film. Because it was the lengthiest film. So, somewhere, every time, you know, while watching the film, she would always tell me, you know, that's your grandfather's voice. And I would always refute and say, no, that's Raj Kapoor ji singing. If I did a Johnny Gaddar, then I also did uh, Aadhe Khizara. Mm -hmm. If I did a New York, I also did a Saath Khun Maaf. Sure. If I did a Lafange Parinde, I also did a Jail. Yeah. So, I have always balanced you know, the kind of films that I need to be a part of. So when it comes to NNM films, I think uh, our forte lies in, in, in thrillers. Sure. And uh, we're just moving to the next step. Neil, thank you so much for taking out the time to talk to us today. So my first question for you is, uh, belonging to a family of illustrious singers, when, why and how did the acting bug bite you? Well, that's a... Uh, that's quite the long story. Yeah. Um, I used to stay with my grandmom uh, in the same building, but we used to get uh, school offs on a Friday and a Saturday. So Friday and Saturday was uh, time to be spent with my grandmother. But when we came of a certain age of about three or four, yeah. then it used to be that every time we had to go there, she had to give us an incentive to really kind of stay with her. So either it would be opening up my grandfather's wardrobe, and taking one item from his cupboard okay. or else it would be that okay if it's a Friday night then we have to watch one of Raj Ankul's films Raj Kapoor Ji's films mm -hmm. so I think I must have seen all Raj Kapoor Ji's films over and over again uh, for about thousand times each probably mm -hmm. you know I've spent so much time with my grandmother while I was growing up and of course uh, Mera Nam Joker used to be our most favorite film mm -hmm. because it was the lengthiest film yeah. So, somewhere, every time, you know, while watching the film, she would always tell me, you know, that's your grandfather's voice. And I would always refute and say, no, that's Raj Kapoor ji singing. And a lot of film fair trophies, the national awards, so many awards out there. I always used to wonder whose awards these are, because at that time for us in school, it used to just be sack race. Yeah. And, you know, if we're getting a medal in sack race or a uh, hundred meter, but, uh, so it just happened that one day I was called uh, for a film. My father was, um, Yash Chopra ji called my father for me to act in a film called Vijay. Right. So I went to Bangalore, I, I performed on a song called Akkad Bakkad Bambi Bo. And ever since I understood what my grandfather's profession was because it was the first time I had to lip sync. Mm. So, yeah, I think the journey began there. and this whole dream of being in front of light camera action is, yeah. is, is something else, yeah. Is there a song of your grandfather's that stands out to you the most? Oh, many of his songs. Uh, for me, I think, Kai uh, Baar ah. Dekha Hai. Yeah. Yeah. So I love Kai Baar. And um, I also love uh, Suhani Chandni Rate. Suhani Chandni Rate. Yeah. It's one of my most favorite songs. Extremely romantic. I think for me, my most favorite remains Dunya Banane Wale. Also, <laughs> of course, of course. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So tell us about your first venture, I mean, with Johnny Gaddar. I heard you had two scripts available to you and you picked the more unusual, risky. Well, actually, I was going through a phase where no one was really confident of me. Yeah. You know, being a singer's grandson, singer's yeah. son, yeah. Uh, becoming an actor, sure. I mean, there were too many questions. Yeah. So I just needed one film to answer all those questions realistically. Sure. Sure. And I think um, I was lucky enough to have knocked many doors. Mm -hmm. Finally, I met Jamuji at a party where I wasn't supposed to be. Yeah. And um, he asked me to come meet him the next day. I met him. He offered me two films at the same time. One was a love story and one was Johnny Gaddar. And I read Johnny first. It had so much meat to bite into, you yeah. know. I just wanted yeah. not to do a film where um, the, the common norm of debuting, mm -hmm. you know, at that time was uh, that you have to do a love story, you have right. to dance around trees. But I needed my questions answered you know, I never wanted a question back on me that, can this guy act? I didn't want that. Yeah. 
and I think for that reason I did Johnny Qatar. Yeah. Obviously, it wasn't uh, easy to just say I want to do the film. Right. There was a man called Sri Ram Raghavan and his entire team who tested me out whether I was capable enough to doing the film for months, and I every time I had to pass the test. Yeah. Eventually, yeah, the film happened, and rest is history. Yeah. But how have you balanced? the commercial and critical side of being an actor? So I do that very often, in fact, not many, many people notice it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but I very consciously make a very, very strong, uh, you know, um, choice, mm -hmm. uh, basically, between commercial and... I, first of all, for me as an actor, I don't understand the, the difference between the two. Mm. I mean, whichever film works on box office is a commercial hit, right. you know, which doesn't, is, is considered offbeatish. But uh, having said that, I think uh, if I did a Johnny Gaddar, then I also did uh, Aade Khe Zara. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I did a New York, I also did a Saat Khun Maaf. Sure. If I did a Lafange Parinde, I also did a Jail. Yeah. So I have always balanced, you know, the kind of films that I need to be a part of. Yeah. Commercial films, the big films, the names is important because uh, it has a much larger audience. Of course, people go and watch those kind of films. So they know of your existence. Right. Uh, and that's very important for an actor. Yeah. People should know that you exist also. Right. People should want to watch your films. Right. Sometimes um, the commercial films do well because uh, they have a certain kind of appeal. And it's not easy to be a part of a uh, ensemble, uh, multi-star cast, commercial, big yeah. film, like and and still stand out. Yeah. So when I did a Prem Ratan Dhanpayo, I did Indu Sarkar. Yeah. When I oh. when I did a Saho, yeah. I did a Bypass Road. Right. So everything kind of has its own balance for me. I I make a very conscious effort to try and pick yeah. subjects and films up in that sense. But Neil, you know your characters for the most part have been very unusual. Uh, and typically when, you know, actors prepare for a role, they go back and look at references. What is that like when you're doing fresh offbeat roles where you don't have much to look back on? I don't, I don't uh, go back to references because yeah. what happens is, if I go back to a reference, the visual medium is so strong. Mm -hmm. My visual sense is extremely strong. Mm -hmm. So subconsciously, I will yeah. just hold back to that. Yeah. So I never prepare with uh, any of you know, a previous actor's work. Right. I don't like getting inspired either in my writing or in my um, in my performance as mm -hmm. far as uh, any kind of inspiration because it just, somebody's already done that, yeah. you know, you've got to create your own. Yeah. The only film that I did do that for though was Hindu Sarkar because I had to Pretty take a, a yeah. few, but there was so much of not, not so much out there for me to explore with. Yeah. And uh, the the character that I played was, uh, chief on on screen Correct. was not. Uh, we don't know too much about him uh, physically. We don't have too many video evidences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the mannerisms were all very limited to what maybe I have read. Mm. So perceived it, and obviously, you know, through my perception of what the character would be, the body language, the twitch, yeah. all of those uh, elements. Yeah. Uh, the arrogance, the style of walk, right. the demeanor, right. all of those uh, things I worked on. Saath Khun Maaf again was a very difficult character for me uh, because um, completely opposite from what you know one would think um, a man with an amputated yeah. leg, yeah. complex in nature. So it was again very very challenging a role. Also I was much younger then mm -hmm. So to pull it off right during my, uh, you know, I was doing, I finished Lafange Parinde right. and I jumped into In that phase, yeah. Same. Yeah. So where I was doing, I still do, right. a lot of these commercial, you know, romantic, Lafange was a romantic uh, yeah. commercial uh, film also. But uh, at that point, to have the guts to do a Saath Khun Maaf was a big challenge for me. Yeah. And I'm very glad that I did that film. Yeah, or in that space even Wazir. David, yeah. Wazir, right. uh, you know, so most of these films, uh, I mean for me, uh, yeah, I mean there's so many of them. Yeah. But like I said, you know, I am very proud of these films that I've done. 
Now, moving on to your venture as a producer, um, even your sort of your big production debut with Bypass Road has been extremely unusual. Now, as a producer, you have to balance the commercials and the financials as well. Yeah. So th that must have gone through your head at some point, right? You know, luckily, since I wrote the film, yeah. I'm a very realistic uh, writer also. Yeah. There are two ways to look into writing. One is just to glorify your writing. Mm -hmm. And one is to actually understand the math behind uh, the economics behind making the film. Yeah. I mean, I can write some extraordinary sequences, but when it comes to execution, if the production cannot afford it, then it's not going to, it's only going to be glorified on paper. Right. So I don't write in that sense. I take a very realistic approach to keep my thrill, my drama, mm -hmm. my elements pretty high. But on a very budgeted, realistic approach. Tomorrow, if hypothetically, I get to write uh, opus on uh, for a mega star who mm. you know can probably shoulder that project. I would love to, and I have already. Right, right. I have a bank of uh, scripts that yeah. I've written. Yeah. But I think each thing needs a step forward. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So we wanted to start with bypass road because. Uh, it's the first time donning so many hats, right. you know, as a producer, as a writer, my brother's the director, I'm the actor, I'm the... So, on an execution point, it was too many things to take up or as a challenge, but I think it was fantastic because I think we did a fantastic job with the film. The film is brilliant, unfortunately, it didn't get the right showcasing, so it didn't uh, live up to the box office expectations as such, but if it was showcased really well, 110% the film has a major appeal with the masses, with the audience. So I'm waiting for it to be showcased on a, on one of the platforms the soon platform. because yeah. you see the kind of buzz yeah. it will create and it yeah. will generate once the film's out there for an audience to watch. But that brings me to my next question. As a producer of today's generation, are you prepping yourself more for different platforms and less 110 for just theatrical? So the whole idea was when I knew that these ODD platforms are getting into India, I wanted at that point to make sure that I get my entrepreneur you know, out of me and my experience of all these years that I have worked yeah. in front of the camera and behind the camera, you know, I put that to use right. and I have knowledge of production, I have been, I have studied direction, I have studied filmmaking. Yeah. So why not explore uh, avenues which are actually going to go out there and give you the opportunity to develop some really interesting sure. content. Sure. This genre, the genre that we dabbled with with Bypass Road also, is not really explored, to be very yeah. honest. Yeah. But now because of the platforms that are coming, everyone wants to do it because that is the need of the hour. Correct. Neil, you know in today's society, there's a lot of debate around tolerance, intolerance, feminism, gender. So as a producer, what responsibility, or do you feel any responsibility on your shoulders about how you're portraying certain things? See, uh, it's a very individualistic uh, approach, you know, yeah. I mean, I cannot, I've never been like that. I right. will never voice my opinion on a mass uh, debate, yeah. even on a platform like Twitter. Yeah. Because I think each one has their own opinion about, uh, about every, everything. Sure. Now, if I might think of a certain way about a certain topic, you might not think about it. Yeah. So for me to go out there and argue about it with you is a waste of your time and mine. I don't have the time to waste, yeah. you know. I don't want to be a part of some conversation. Yeah, where I think, where my opinion is required, I will go and give my opinion. But where it's not, so coming to your, uh, your question, uh, you, you're just uh, bothered about the facts that, yeah, I hope you're not portraying it in a way that people might be affected by. Mm -hmm. So we keep sure that uh, we run it by about a couple of people, not just about uh, feminism. Why, why are we negating uh, the male uh, sure. gender sure. also, you know? Some boys can be, uh, uh, you know, victim affected or victim to a certain... So why are we uh, neglecting them? Yeah. You know, I think humanity in general is something that you one needs to approach uh, correctly. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, looking into the next year, 2020, um, what can we expect? 
Well, um, you will of course have to expect a lot of thrill. Okay. <laughs> because when it comes to NNM films, I think uh, our forte lies in, in, in thrillers. Sure. And uh, we're just moving to the next step. So there are many web series that we've developed right now. So we are just hoping that uh, the platform start green lighting them soon. Like I said, till uh, it doesn't go on floor, I don't really talk. Bypass Road was 90% complete when I spoke about it. Oh, wow. Yeah, for the first time. So till I don't really get my work done, yeah. then rest everything is just a bubble. Now, last but not least, coming to the M of the NNM films, do you feel that there's a legacy you have to carry on? Of course, of yeah. course. I mean, uh, the whole idea behind the production is the fact that we belong to a legacy yeah. and we need to carry that on. See, our, our craft, our art is all ours. We can't pass it on to the next generation. Sure. Sure. But we want the legacy to continue. I mean, I hope Nurvi grows up to becoming an artist. Yeah. But if not, then I will hope that she understands production, she takes the legacy forward of what we are very strongly trying to do for our grandfather, right. our father and of course for generations to come. Awesome. Neil, thank you so much. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.